saw the comments from the first video, and one of the questions that I got was, where's the rest of the airplane? Because the run-up sequence with the engine start, first time we ran the engine on that plane was before it was finished. And so today I'm going to walk you around the RV-14A finished product and let you see what an RV is all about. This is an RV-14A. And you know it's a 14A because an A model has a nose wheel. Nose wheel lets it sit up, lets the pilot sit with good visibility while taxiing. Doesn't make a big difference when flying in the performance. Uh, a lot of people prefer it. An RV-14 without the A is a tailwheel model with conventional gear, meaning it doesn't have a nose wheel. It just taxis around at an angle. And then when you take off and fly, you have a itty bitty wheel in the back and not as much drag. You might get a knot or two faster. So, uh, constant speed propeller with an IO390 engine, 210 horsepower, air cooled, air comes in here and cools the engine. Fiberglass spinner, all metal construction throughout the aircraft except for the uh, fiberglass trim. Plexiglass canopy. Very lightweight with excellent visibility. When you sit inside this plane, it's like there's nothing between you and the outside. There's nothing overhead. You have 360 degree view of everything around you. The wing is aluminum construction. It's hollow on the inside. Uh, we take advantage of that here because we use the hollow front edge of the wing for the gas tank. So the gas tanks are actually part of the wing. Uh, when you open up the cap here and put in gas, you're putting gas inside the hollow part of the wing in this area. There's a special sealant that keeps it from leaking out. It's very smelly and very messy and in a video down the road we'll probably show some pictures of what it's like to close up the tanks. Um, back end of the wing are the flaps and ailerons and they bolt to the fuselage with about six bolts and so there's a not a tremendous amount of attachment point between the wing and the fuselage. Uh, you'd be impressed, but steel is pretty strong and it does a really good job with just a few good sized bolts. The empennage is the tail section, so what we're working on right now with the RV-8 is what you see back here. The vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, elevators, and rudder. And all these things work to provide pitch control for the aircraft with the elevator and yaw control for right and left direction using the rudder. So moving forward on the right side of the aircraft from the empennage up the fuselage, there's a step here that we would step on. The other foot would go here, non-skid strip, and then you can hook your hand behind the support and pull yourself up onto the wing. Of course, it's always handy to open the canopy first. The canopy opens very simply. It's connected with two hinges on the front and has gas struts that hold it up as a tip-up configuration. So to get in, I'll step here, put a hand here, get it up on the wing, and in I go. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple to get in and out. Excellent access with this model. This RV-14 has a pretty good avionics package in it. It's rated for full instrumented flight. Uh, two 10-inch touch displays with all of the flight data displayed upon them and maps and charts. Also navigational data, GPS, autopilot, communication systems with two radios, uh, communication and navigation type, and a backup display for heading. You'll see the controls for the throttle, propeller, and mixture low on the bottom, and the circuit breakers further down. I sure hope you've enjoyed this short walk around of the RV-14A. It's a great airplane, does a little bit over 203 miles an hour in cruise the way I have it configured. Rock solid, great performance, gets off the deck like nothing, and the landings are smooth as silk. Couldn't be happier, it's a great performing airplane.